thank you all for uh, coming tonight. Um, I'm very familiar with some of the work that AARP does. My mother does or has done in the past the low income tax preparation work. Um, and I'm familiar with AARP and uh, kind of the good things it does. And thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, when I think about the future of Blacksburg, I think of a thriving, prosperous town, a place that takes pride in its neighborhoods, its schools, and its sense of community, that has a stimulating and culturally relevant community with a wide range of employment and housing opportunities, that has a vibrant downtown that's connected to the world uh, through new technologies, whether that's broadband, internet, uh, or other new technologies. I imagine a town that's experienced economic recovery, uh, that values its natural and its cultural resources and has a strong sense of regionalism and it engages citizens with open government and vibrant citizen democracy. My name is Michael Seth and I'm running for Blacksburg Town Council because I want to be a part of that future. Um, I've lived in Blacksburg for the past nine years. Uh, I came to Virginia Tech uh, in 2002 as a student. I majored in uh, communication and worked for the Collegiate Times as a news editor and reporter and I wrote a lot about local government and a lot of other issues affecting uh, the town. I was also served as a number of student leadership uh, positions. Uh, I graduated in 2006 and got a job working for uh, Virginia Tech doing communications uh, work after I graduated. And I've been very active and very involved in the community. Uh, in 2009, I ran for Blacksburg Town Council and got a strong, had a strong showing with over 2,100 votes and an endorsement of the uh, Rona Times. Uh, since then, I've had experience on Blacksburg's Long Range Planning Committee and its Housing and Community Development Advisory Board, so I've uh, been even more involved with the community. Um, I take pride in the fact that I'm committed to service and have been volunteering and been involved in the town of Blacksburg and really made it uh, my home. When I was a student, I was active in the big event at Relay for Life. Um, after I graduated, I went to the Dominican Republic and helped at a home for Haitian uh, children and teens. Um, this summer, I ran a 5K run for raft uh, event for a local crisis hotline. Um, like I said, I've been involved in campus and community organizations. I serve on the board of directors for a nonprofit that's based out of Richmond. I've been very, very involved um, in the community. I think what I have. Um, to offer to the town of Blacksburg is I'm, I'm good at seeing big picture things, but I'm also very good at uh, understanding the small details and getting into the nitty gritty of how local government uh, works. And I hope to be talking a little bit about some of those specifics um, uh, today. Um, I think I also offer, I have cordial relations with the current members of the town council and um, the other candidates, and I, I think that I work well in groups and I hope that I'm able to move Blacksburg forward. I think I'm just out of time now, but thank you very much again for coming. Thank you, Michael. We'll start next with Paul Langhaster. Uh, before I begin, I do want to say I talked to uh, Mel Huber's daughter over the weekend, and uh, she said that he did have a family commitment out of town that he had scheduled a year ago and just could not give up. So he, uh, she said that that's the reason he couldn't make it to here today, but that he wanted to. Thank you all for coming, and thanks to AARP for sponsoring this forum. Uh, I've served on town council from 2004 to 2008, and I've also served on the town's planning commission for 10 years, and I am now involved in my third comprehensive plan review. That's more than anyone else in town. The comp plan, of course, forms the basis for most of the decisions made by town council. I've also done volunteer work for the Y, the Free Clinic, and the United Way. As it turns out, issues we took up in the years I served on council are coming to fruition now. The North Main Street project was approved during my term. I also served as council liaison to the Friends of the Farmer's Market as we developed plans for what has turned out to be a cornerstone of downtown. I started the movement for a dog park. We now have one, and we need another one. I was also on the winning side of the 4-3 vote to move Bill Brown Stadium from the old middle school location to its present, <coughs> present location. Where would we be in redeveloping the old middle school property? And where would we be in building new high school? Had we not approved that move a few years ago? I'd like to continue the progress we foresaw during my first term of office, including proper development of the old middle school property and the Patrick high Henry High School properties, uh, substantially completing the pedestrian bikeway master plan and some of the other issues we'll discuss today. Again, my thanks to AARP for giving me and the other candidates a chance to speak. Thank you, Paul. Leslie, you're the third. Thank you. Uh, thank you. As, as the it's not working. Thank you.
quality of life issues and the experiences of residents <coughs> in their neighborhoods. And I know why people live in Blacksburg. It's the same reason I do. We like it here. It's a great place to live, a great place to raise a family. I've raised with my wife two sons who are grown men now, one in graduate school and one works at South. I'm sure you'll be happy to take your table next time you're there. <laughs> um, and, you know, one of the things we have to do is to make sure as we grow, as Corporate Research Center in Virginia Tech grows, that our life here, our view sheds and our neighborhoods, are still the kinds of places we want to be and the kinds of places we want to live in. That's what I pledge to work on, and I pledge to listen to you about how best to do that as we go forward, as we do things like develop the middle school property, and as we continue to have other development happening in the town, both in the downtown and in our infrastructure corridors. Thank you, and please let me know if there's anything particular on your mind, either this afternoon or any time in the future. Thank you to each one of the candidates for sticking to this time. We're going to pass the second round, uh, and they they don't have any of these questions in advance, so this is impromptu, just like it is frequently on town council. So your one to two minute response to what are your specific plans to reach out to the growing senior population in Blacksburg? Paul. Well, I was looking at uh, Paul Steele, Dale Oliver uh, in the audience and Wendell Hensley and I, the easy answer, volunteer. We have a lot of committees and commissions. Paul has helped us with, uh, uh, bicycle, with uh, sidewalks and bikeways and pathways for longer than I've been alive, <laughs> I think. And Dale served on the planning commission for uh, 35 years, uh, which has got, got to be a record. I think that's uh, one thing uh, sort of a reverse way that we can reach out to you is by you reaching out to us. There are uh, lots of uh, committees of interest, a traffic committee. Uh, I've heard some talk about the roundabout today. There is a traffic committee, and it is, uh, sometimes has citizen volunteers joining you. So uh, getting involved with town government, I think, is the best way that uh, you can uh, get in touch with us. Uh, we are, of course, always uh, contact, easy to contact via email or by phone. The numbers are listed on the town website along with council biographies and that sort of thing. I think what I would like to do in terms of uh, reaching out more to the seniors is to uh, work on uh, issues for uh, uh, more senior activity in, uh, as we consider a new um, recreation center type of building. I think there's a, a, this place has obviously become overcrowded. There's a lot of need for uh, more space, and I think the seniors are of particular need for, for more space. Thank, thank you, Paul. Uh, Leslie, your comments on uh, uh, how you reach out to the senior population. Is this the one? Is this the one? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, yeah, thank you for that question. And um, I can think of, I would say, um, three or four different things that I think will be important. Largely, what's good for the rest of us is good for seniors and vice versa. We need to have walkable neighborhoods. We need to invest in the Blacksburg Transit. We want to increase our bicycle and our pedestrian pathways. And I can speak to each of these at a little bit more length. Those are good for everybody. Those are good for your grandbabies, too. And so what makes for a good community is what makes for a good community for all people. There are specific programs and uh, programming and equipment and things that I think are um, we have been in uh, investing in at the rec center here, obviously, we have a new uh, workout room. Uh, it could be much, much larger, and hopefully it will be. Uh, many of you, I think, have followed the, uh, the path of the uh, Parks and Recreation study that has taken place recently. Uh, when I came to town in 1982, we had one of the nicest and most state-of-the-art rec centers. And not surprisingly, because this is the way it works in public life, it has uh, not been improved upon for, for several years. And other projects have gone ahead of it. And in the meantime, neighboring communities have built much more substantial rec centers. So uh, I think that we can go farther. I think um, um, that is already in the works. There was a very significant um, needs assessment done in the last 18 months. And uh, some members of town staff started out with an idea. They had a vision, and that's a good thing to have. They had a vision that perhaps we could have a very large sort of destination facility. 
and it would be something like a field house, and it would have flexible space, and it could bring sports in. What they found when they deep listened to the people who answered their questions was that Blacksburg citizens weren't looking for that. They wanted more of a sound recreation area and more pathways, bikeways, and, uh, and, and livable neighborhoods. Thank you, Leslie. John Bush, your reaction to growing senior population, your plans. Thank you. Um, two main things. Everything should be accessible. Everything should be accessible to all adults. That's the concept of universal design. We have a lot of room for improvement in that area. I think I understand that issue both as an architect and a designer, and as a son and a mother who now uses the walker. Anyone can have an impediment. You can have an accident or injury at any age, and it's important for when we do public spaces and do think about our streets, transportation, rec center, and all of that that we design for seniors that need uh, different accommodations. I think that's important, and that's something I think I'm going to argue for. Um, I also want to say about recreational spaces that I've heard from several folks that they want to have more rec spaces that are geared towards senior uh, needs, and I think that's something we need to accomplish and consider as we go forward. I think that's something we can do both on uh, public space as well as additions to this building or in nearby facilities. Uh, alternative transportation and alternative routes are something that everybody needs, but that needs to be linked up to perhaps what might be referred to as over 50 or over 55 housing. We need to uh, have more housing downtown in the area. Perhaps we can accomplish some of that on the middle school site. That's something I'm going to argue for, where we can link up housing to the commercial districts and to our, our transportation routes so that there's easier access for people to get back and forth uh, while not uh, while providing alternative forms of transportation. Uh, it's, it's a good question, Carl, and I do think it's something that we need to be attended to and uh, something I've touched more on. Thank you, John. Uh, Michael, your ideas on reaching out to the senior population? Um, sure. As mentioned earlier, there's lots of ways to get seniors more involved in the decision-making process and, and be more involved in the, the town and how it makes decisions. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, committees in town, whether it's from traffic to, to sidewalks um, to all sorts of issues that have been mentioned. And um, it would be great if we could not only get more seniors on those uh, committees, but uh, reach out and try to um, reach out to communities with their senior populations to get them involved in that. For In regards to specific issues affecting um, seniors, I think I agree with John, we need more affordable senior housing in uh, Blacksburg. The old Blacksburg Middle School site, as you mentioned, would be a great uh, location, and the master plan includes um, some of that. I, I also think that we need to continue to make sure our community is accessible to everyone um, at every age, every income level. Um, and I think we need to deal with um, some of these quality of life uh, and types of issues. Wouldn't it be great if we had an independent pharmacy downtown, for example? I think that that would be something um, that could benefit everyone, including um, seniors. It would also be great if we could have extend uh, bus service uh, to Warm Park. I think that would be something that could benefit some of the senior community. Um, and also increasing senior programs at the rec center and the community center that we're in today, I think, would also help. All right. Thank you, Mike. Paul, any further thoughts? I, I, one. I did want to mention that uh, uh, Karen Drake is going to be here to talk about the comprehensive plan and has forms for you to fill out. We're reaching out that way, too. Uh, so uh, be sure to fill out uh, the forms that she has available as far as thoughts that you want in the next comprehensive plan. Thank you. Leslie, I start with you on this round. What are your plans for the relatively the new old Blacksburg High School on Patrick Henry Drive across the street. Yep. What are your plans, particularly have related to this previous question about senior housing? Two minutes. As it relates to senior housing? Well, in general, how do you want, what's your plan for dealing with the availability of this space across the street? Well, it's not available yet, and uh, but that there are many uh, conversations ongoing at this point. It's clear that it won't be occupied again uh, the land is there and can be used in many artful ways. There seems to be a consensus building, um, and that is that it would have a dual purpose, at least, with additional acreage available for other things, but that a new rec center would be there, an expanded rec center. This one wouldn't go away, but we would have um, new, new facilities and new services available there. Um, there is acreage left where a track and, and fields could be, and also, we desperately need a new home for our rescue squad. And um, I 
was concerned about it, that at first, and so I did a little bit of homework on that. I thought, now, how, how would I feel if somebody put uh, a rec center next to my house? After all, we need to be sensitive to the fact that this is single-family residences here. Uh, in fact, most, uh, most re um, emergency facilities are governed by uh, rules that will restrict the lights and the sirens after hours. So rescue squads can be good neighbors, especially to seniors. <laughs> so. Thank you. John Bush. Um, the important thing to remember with the high school property that's right next, next to us here is that the town does not own it, the county does. So we're in a similar situation that we were just recently with the middle school property. We control the zoning, and that's it. And right now it's zoned R4, which means you can put four, residential, four residential units per acre. Uh, right now, as most of you know, there's no market for residential units. So we think it's in the, in the county's interest to work with the town so that we can perhaps purchase at a reasonable price that property for future use. I recognize that the question is about future use, but first we have to obtain it. And we're going to insist that the county do their part to chip in, especially if we build a, uh, a rescue squad, because that is a Montgomery County facility that the town shares with them. It will be part of their responsibility to help provide for that. I do think there are several uses that make sense. I think expanding recreational facilities across the street from this and the aquatic center makes some sense for everybody. I think what's most important is what's not going to happen there. We're not going to build more student housing. We're not going to have commercial development there. We're going to do something that makes some sense for the surrounding neighborhoods and community and for the Blacksburg citizenry. So I'm going to work very hard in terms of, of uh, making sure that we negotiate a fair deal with the and that we can come up with something that makes some sense there. I think there are lots of alternatives. I think the rec center makes some sense, the rescue squad makes some sense, and there may be opportunities for some of the senior housing that we're talking about too. That can make sense, and that can make good neighbors for the neighboring uh, residential areas that are surround that, that piece of property right now. Thank you, John. Michael, what are your plans for the space across the street? Well, as, as Leslie and John already pointed out, the town of Blackford doesn't currently own the property, but the conversations and negotiations are um, currently taking place or going to be taking place um, in the future. I agree that the, the property should be used for um, possibly increasing uh, rec center space, um, not, not getting rid of this community center, but um, having additional space for a rec center. I think that the fields which are currently being used for some athletic recreational um, uses right now should continue to be uh, used in that way. And I, I also agree that a rescue squad makes sense uh, for that uh, place. I know that rescue squads can sometimes, because of noise and other issues, uh, be a concern. I used to live on Harding Avenue near the end where uh, progress is near the current rescue squad. And I know that uh, noise can sometimes be an issue, but it sounds like. Uh, and that, that just isn't right. Um, I do like the idea of looking at affordable housing there, uh, primarily because it is a residential area, uh, and I think uh, uh, this would be a good opportunity to uh, develop some sort of some, uh, uh, affordable housing, uh, whether it be based for seniors or for, for any group. Uh, but I also think that uh, uh, all this takes money, so that's going to be part of the issue. And again, as it's been said, we don't own the land yet. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, John, you ready to start on one? Let me know what it is. An easy one. What is your position regarding Blacksburg becoming a city? <laughs> ah, Carl's favorite question. <laughs> um, you know, to, to my mind, it just doesn't make sense that we consider that right now. I think there are two main reasons. One is the cost that would be involved, and that's going and, and obtaining all the property and all the buildings for our schools, a new court system, and all the constitutional officers that the county is required to have and the city is required to have if they, take, if they leave the county. The other main reason I think that, that it doesn't make sense for us is we're in a growing time of interconnectivity and interrelationships both between Virginia Tech and the county and I think anything that moves away from that is not the right approach and won't be the right approach as we move down the next 15, 20 years or so. We need better communication with our county folks, better communication with the upper administration of Virginia Tech, not less communication. And we don't want to wall ourselves off, in my opinion, as a city that has lost contact with the other par parts and places in the county. 
which we are. That's who we are. Some of us live in the county, perhaps, and still think of Blacksburg as their town, and I understand and appreciate that. Um, I think sometimes when we go through difficult issues like the school issue, it is something to consider if our county representatives are not representing the best interests of our town and of the north side of Blacksburg to, ha to have this conversation. But we need, instead of to divorce ourselves from the county, we need better representation on the county. We need better people, smarter people, people that are able to really think for themselves and to really articulate the needs of, of the town and of the northern part of the county. They're representing us. Uh, and in my opinion, it is not, would not be a wise move for us to be a city as opposed to a town that exists within a county and with our neighbors and families. <coughs> Thank you, John. Michael, what's your position on the city status issue? Uh, it's my understanding that a number of years ago, the town of Blacksburg uh, did a study and actually looked into this issue and found that it doesn't make financial sense for the town of Blacksburg uh, to become a city. Our property taxes would go up. We would either have to uh, purchase the schools that are within the town of Blacksburg or do some sort of arrangement like um, my, my hometown of Williamsburg has where there's an agreement between the, the city and the, the neighborhood uh, county. Um, as John said, we would have to um, elect constitutional officers um, and, and go through um, a, a lot of other efforts um, that, that just didn't make some financial sense at the time. Um, we've already had to, or the county rather, will have to uh, raise property taxes to pay for these schools. It, it wouldn't um, make sense to have to raise them even more so that the town of Blacksburg could uh, become a city. And, and as John already pointed out, we are in a, um, with the, the passage of the Old Blacksburg Middle School Master Plan, hopefully we'll be able to build on uh, the momentum where we're working with our regional partners, um, whether that's um, uh, Montgomery County or the, city, or the town of Christiansburg or nearby uh, the city of Radford or Virginia Tech or Radford University. We want to work together um, as a community. I don't think at this time it makes sense to become a city. Okay, thank you, Paul. Two minutes. Oh, I won't need that long. Okay. No, you're good. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, the answer is no. I don't think uh, it would help us at all. for all the reasons I already stated. The financial uh, consideration would be phenomenal. Uh, you know, again, getting getting our own school system started, the court system, the constitutional officers, which could be shared with the county uh, to some degree, but still, uh, considering what Richmond's been doing to constitutional officers lately, it's not really a good idea to get into that business. Having said that, in general, I think that the towns have uh, been favorably left out of the vision of the General Assembly as of late. A lot of the money that's been taken from localities has been coming from cities and counties. Uh, and towns have pretty much been, been left alone, uh, mostly because of the 240 some towns in Virginia. Most of them are under a thousand population, and they, they don't have much to work with anyway. I'm kind of hoping that that situation continues. Uh, we have survived uh, very, very well uh, with the cuts from Richmond so far. Um, I will just say that it is very important that you get out and vote uh, this November for the uh, uh, state senate and house of delegates elections because. That will have an impact on uh, what happens to uh, money uh, uh, being more money being taken away from the localities. Thank you, Paul. Leslie, your position. Uh, I, I know that this is a, a topic that you've followed for a long time, Carl, and, and you're very knowledgeable on it. And um, I agree with the other three candidates here. I I don't find that it's a viable solution right now, but I want to acknowledge uh, your concerns uh, and those of other people who feel that we should make that kind of change. Um, I have a list of ways that Blacksburg helps to carry this county and uh, not, not to be mean-spirited or begrudging, but to just put it out there and be very candid about the situation. Um, Blacksburg generally uh, handles all the rescue squad uh, calls in the uh, western side of the county. We also handle all the fire department calls. We are uh, not compensated by the county except to possibly about 10% of the cost of that. So uh, there's a service that we provide right there. We uh, have recently engaged in a, in a special water arrangement because the county for years and years and years refused to uh, do anything about getting its own facilities in place, decided well water was you know, 
God's water, and that was good enough for them. Well, now it comes clear that um, we, they need uh, to have uh, water and sewer, and uh, there's been a very lengthy process by which a, a figure for what would be fair for them to buy into the regional water authority, what that fair figure would be. Well, they can't touch it. So then we brought it down, and they still can't touch it. So then we brought that cost down a third time, and now they want to do it, but with no interest. <laughs> okay, so uh, these are the kinds of difficulties we get into. The Blacksburg Transit is largely funded by, truthfully, Virginia Tech students, but also uh, Blacksburg uh, uh, taxpayers. Home Funds Administration comes from Blacksburg, and so do uh, many of the leadership activities of the PDC. Thank you. Michael, you get to go first on this. It's a tie-in to uh, the previous questions. How can the town of Blacksburg and Montgomery County move more closely to working together? Why don't you give us two or three specific points that you could point, you'd like to see happen? Okay, well, thank you for this question. Regional cooperation is actually one of the four major things that I'm focusing on in this campaign. And I have some of my uh, handouts out there that have um, actually some specific things uh, that we can work on. One of them that the county and the town can uh, work together as a region is economic development. Um, we, we have a, a wonderful uh, county and a wonderful place that we live in with uh, amazing natural beauty. We're close to Jefferson National Forest, uh, we're close to the Appalachian Trail, we have a research one, a university, and a highly educated uh, workforce. And I think that we need to promote these things as a place where we can bring uh, businesses into Blacksburg and to uh, Montgomery County and to the region. Uh, recently, Backcountry.com invested uh, $20 million in uh, something like 200 jobs uh, that will be coming um, into the, the county, and I think that um, the, the town of Blacksburg needs to be working with the county to work on these sorts of economic development types of issues. That, that would be one thing that um, they should work together on. Another thing is the schools issue, which has already been talked about a lot, and I've mentioned um, several times, because the, the county um, pays for and does the school system. In fact, 61% of the county's budget goes into um, schools. Um, uh, that, that's something that we need to work on and work together on uh, with this issue coming up with the, what we're going to do with high school property, um, the, the new high school and the location, the old Blackstone Middle School, so move forward with that. Um, so economic development, schools, uh, transportation types of issues are uh, like a third way that uh, we can work together both as a town and a county. Our boundaries are invisible lines on a map. Um, they, they do mean things for utilities and, and other things, but the roads don't stop once we leave the town of Blacksburg, either do bike lanes or our trails or anything else uh, for that matter. And we need to work together to make sure that public and alternative transportation um, uh, works well and we can improve our transportation for the Blacksburg and the county. Thank you, Michael. Paul, some specific areas of cooperation between the town and the county. All right, thank you. Um, just to, uh, just to, uh, Iterate what uh, Michael said about the uh, boundaries or just lines on the map. It is actually the comprehensive plan that there should be a seamless connection between the county and the town. You shouldn't be able to tell when you're going from one to the other, and we we'll try to adhere to that. Having said that, one of the areas we've tried to work with is, is in this development of what are called urban development areas, areas in which uh, uh, theoretically uh, the state would be uh, offering money as incentives to. Uh, more condensed development. One of the areas that we made in Blacksburg is in the south, in the hospital area, uh, which is adjacent to the county's only urban development area, which is that little in between thing between Christiansburg and Blacksburg. So I'm hoping that we'll get some cooperation and to get some projects going in that area, uh, specifically uh, to widen High Top Road. Uh, getting to Warmhearth is bad enough, but if you go past that, uh, the Returns can be pretty bad, and for the new development of 300 some units going up, it's going to get worse. Also, <clears throat> I think uh, and the Planning Commission currently has advisory uh, opinions to offer on uh, uh, projects in, in this part of the county neighborhood. Uh, we can offer our opinions, but I think in terms of areas, especially with view, the view shift, what's going on in Brush Mountain, I think uh, it'd be nice if the town could uh, develop more of a uh, uh, light to its recommendations uh, that go to the county as far as development on, on, in places like that. Uh, that uh, both, both the mountain and sensitive areas around the town that uh, perhaps uh, we would like to not see developed as much. Uh, the areas, for example, around uh, uh, Town Street Basin, uh, I think we'd like those uh, to be left pretty much as they are. 
So I think uh, um, in areas of planning and zoning, I think we have a number of opportunities to, uh, to add. Thank you, Paul. <coughs> Leslie, your idea is on cooperation with the county. Thank you. Um, I, I have a, a couple of prepared remarks and then I'll speak more extemporaneously. But uh, I have been working uh, in my first uh, term on council with members of the board of supervisors and also with members of the school board because there has been, there has been as we all know, one emergency after another. I've done so publicly and I've done so privately. I've spoken before the supervisors, I've spoken before the, the school board, and I've reached out to individual members. Uh, even some of the members who are uh, possibly the most distant from our uh, from my personal experience and our own concerns here in Blacksburg. And I'll continue to do that. Uh, there really isn't an alternative. Elected officials don't get an employee manual, per se. We get some tips, but most of our learning is on the job. And the point of having a political body is that rules can't be made for every single exigency. So you need reliable leaders who can feel their way through real-time problems and to reach out to others and get the information they need and forge the kinds of relationships that are required. Uh, but the supervisors and the, and the uh, school board, as far as that goes, are, are not the only people we need to reach out to. When the school fell, when the high school fell, groups of parents in Blacksburg reached out to groups of parents in Auburn. When I was director of the downtown merchants of Blacksburg, I reached out to my counterparts in the downtown of Christiansburg and also in the downtown of Bradford. So those kinds of relationships need to continue. Uh, I would say also, uh, that I think we're in a good place. If you look realistically, in spite of the negatives that I named in the previous question, if you look realistically at the solution that we have arrived at for building of schools in both Auburn and Blacksburg, both, both schools took some hits in the design process. Both of them are being built uh, simultaneously. These are the kinds of uh, concrete proofs that we are making progress in our relations. And the last thing I just have to say is, it's important to note that Blacksburg's community of values is expanding. In the last 10-year census, Christiansburg, Blacksburg rose by 7% in population. Christiansburg rose by an astounding 25%. Okay, that's not because everybody's rushing in to get to live in the county seat. Those are that those are people who are commuting back and forth to Blacksburg. Thank you, Leslie. John, last comment on this issue. Uh, thank you. Um, the important thing to remember is. We're all in this together. We're all county residents, especially as a town, and our future lies with the county and theirs with ours. Um, we do do some good things together. There are some good things happening. For example, the Montgomery County Economic Development Authority is the, is the group that markets our industrial park. It's about maxed out, but they've been doing that for years. Um, there is the property with the schools. We've been working with them to, to, uh, to resolve the issues that have to do with the schools. And we're going to continue to do that, especially with the high school property next door. I know individuals on this um, council, current council, as well as the mayor particularly, have reached out to the individuals on the Board of Supervisors and have performed close personal working relationships. That can't be emphasized enough. We have to talk through and work through these issues. Picking up on what Leslie just mentioned about the town of Christiansburg Road, one thing I try to remind people is that I think our experience more and more is not really of two communities, whether it's Christiansburg or Blacksburg or even Blacksburg and the rest of the county. It's, it's largely becoming more like one community. As Christiansburg grows, there are folks that are growing there, are people that often work at the Corporate Research Center or work at Virginia Tech. Or they, have schools, they have school issues just like we do. Our future for this county lies both in the prosperity of the university, the Corporate Research Center, and these two towns. And we have to do everything we can to support that. If, if the Christiansburg is doing something like the like developing this expanded retail center that they have out at the 114 intersection, then that's something that we should embrace. We don't need to copy that. They do that, we do other things. They're not going to get an ACC school in their midst anytime soon, but we do have that, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna play off of each other to both individuals in both towns and communities' benefits. There are other things that we're doing. The 911 center that's being developed right now between Virginia Tech, Town of Blacksburg, Christiansburg, and the county. Those are areas of cooperation that I think you're going to continue to see in the future. Thank you, John. Last question before the closing statements. We'll start with Paul. What are your plans to have better working relationships with Virginia Tech? Uh, where do I start? No, uh, first of all, before I, I, I get to better working relationships, I will point out that if you look in the comprehensive plan, 
time, there was a list of, I think, about 40 different areas of cooperation between Virginia Tech and the town of Glassburg. Uh, these are the things you don't hear about on a regular basis because they've been going on for years and they operate fairly smoothly. Having said that, uh, there is, of course, the issue of collecting the meals tax, which I first raised uh, five years ago, uh, collecting the meals tax on campus to be fair to the, the uh, restaurants in town. If I go to uh, a restaurant, Au Bon Pan, and it's fires, and I buy a $5 meal, uh, the town gets nothing. If I go to uh, Souvlaki down the street and get a $5 meal, the town gets uh, 30 cents. That's just not fair to have, be paying that much more in the, in the town and not in the uh, uh, tech area. So I think that's one area we need to work on. And I think that can be done cooperatively. I think their fear is that if we do that, they're going to, uh, that we're going to uh, start trying to charge an admission staff to football games. Boy, would that be nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but that's another issue for another day. Um, I also think that we, we, we need to work better on getting some of the housing issues around downtown uh, figured out. Obviously, a lot of the student uh, and uh, owner-occupied uh, housing, there's a lot of conflict, as John can attest to, certainly. And uh, I think that if uh, we can work with the uh, uh, Virginia Tech to try to figure out ways of getting students more uh, closer to campus and, and maybe other sorts of housing, that whole area where the old vet school was, is an area for possible development. I think there are answers to that. Thank you, Paul. Leslie, your ideas of cooperation. Give us two or three in closing. I would have to say that uh, this is a, a complex issue, but uh, I think it would be a mistake to be dire about it. I mean, the truth is most, most of us love this town. We love this region, and most of us love Virginia Tech. And I would say, I'm looking around the room here, and I'm thinking that many, many of us have two feet in, in both uh, in both uh, institutions, you know, in the town and also at Virginia Tech. And so I don't feel dire about this situation. The meals tax has been an extreme rub. Um, and a lot of us have given a, a lot of energy uh, to, that, uh, to that issue, but uh, it's, it's not the only one. Uh, I think it is important to have sound personal relationships with the people that we can have. I think there's lots of things that I can name that are going well. We have internships with members of uh, the tech community, externships. Uh, we reach out individually to departments and they reach back out to us. Uh, there are many professors uh, who are involved in town politics and vice versa, plenty of people on our town council who are involved in tech. Uh, an example would be that on our present town council, two, uh, two are members of town of university staff. Uh, one is a student, a Christian Chantra. Uh, five of seven, have family connections to Virginia Tech, and, and this is representative of our town generally, so I think it's a mistake to be dire. Um, I do want to say uh, that there are places that can offer us more healthy, more sound relationships of what a good town-gown relationship looks like. Uh, I happen to have uh, some information here on uh, Cornell University that is putting $20 million into a partnership with its town. I don't expect that to happen any time with Tech. Um, I do think that there is hope that a new generation of leadership on Tech's campus will behave differently than the present. Um, I, I guess I, I would say this, though. Uh, I'll name two or three. Uh, One last items. point. Okay. Uh, I'll name these items that I think have gone badly and that are representative of the present administration. The Hokie real estate case, where Tech has prosecuted a longtime business for using the word Hokie. The announcement in April that Virginia Tech will appeal $55,000 in federal fines, that's a rounding error to Virginia Tech. Uh, refusal to collect, not pay, but collect meals tax. And also, there, Tech is operating its, its uh, electric <coughs> franchise at this moment on a left contract. Uh, so I, I see there are some very troubling uh, pieces to the relationship, and I think a new generation of leadership will help to resolve those. All right, thank you, John. A couple of ideas. Leslie's right um, in the sense that most of us here have relationships both with the town and the county. My family's a good example of that. My wife and I both have graduate degrees from Virginia Tech. We both work at Virginia Tech. I'm a staff architect. I help do the development and the planning of the university and its holdings across the street internationally grow. Um, 
problems. I also help plan for the town. And sometimes those lines of, of development meet at the town gown edge. Um, there are some good things that are happening, but there's plenty of room for improvement. The thing that really has to happen, more importantly than anything else, is that the tech administration at the very highest levels has to openly embrace the town that their university is located in. What's good for them is this town's prosperity and well-being. And that includes issues having to do with the meals tax. It also includes issues with them appropriating neighborhoods for their own um, development and future growth. Those are red flags for the town because it takes out real estate and property taxes as those neighborhoods get appropriated by the, by the university and then turned into state agency land. Those are issues. We need, to, we need to address them, and they need to be aware that those are issues for the town and our prosperity. Uh, there are a lot of good things that happen, particularly with our cooperation with the Blackfoot Transfer and Transportation in general. But neighborhoods and housing are a big issue. Uh, Paul has stated on several occasions that the text answer to that should be development of more dormitories. But I can say unequivocally right here and now that that's not going to happen, and that's not the answer. And I'll tell you why. A new dorm costs $20 million, and it houses about 350 beds. If we've got 18,000 students. Thank you for coming out today. Uh, I appreciate any opportunity I can get to meet folks and talk about the issues that are some concern to all of us here. I'm very gratified to have the support of many neighbors and friends, and I feel like I can do a good job on council representing your interests and our interests as the town continues to grow, prosper, and develop. I think it's critical that we have critical eyes, people that know the difference between good and bad development, people that can talk about why the quality of life issues and the residential development that we live in are so important to all of us, the view sheds, et cetera, and open green space. We want to continue those things that have brought all of us to this town, and we want to make sure as we grow that those things and those qualities are still there. Thank I pledge to do that for all of you, so please come out and vote on November 8th. Thank you. Michael, one minute. Closing statement. Uh, it's been a very busy uh, campaign season, as any other campaign season is. I've been out knocking on doors. I've answered a ton of questions about a full range of topics that we've seen today. I've talked to people of all different ages, income levels, and stations of life. Um, I've spoken to student groups, to at fellow house parties. I've been very involved in trying to reach as many people with my campaign um, to let people know about it. Just, just a few things. I, I take pride in the fact that I can think independently, that I can meet with people and make decisions, uh, sound decisions that will impact uh, people in Blacksburg. I think I'm very uh, forward thinking. I'm looking towards the future about where we want to see Blacksburg in 10, 20, uh, 30 years. And I think that, um, that, that I can help move the town forward um, so that we continue to advance on kind of the successes we've had in recent years uh, working with the current council and that we can move forward uh, to make sure that Blacksburg remains a vibrant, uh, wonderful community that it is today. Thank you. Paul, closing one minute statement. Okay. We need to think of uh, all the big issues that have come up today, but we need to think about the next step and the smaller issues that go along with them. An example is when we first got community development of black grants, we not only provided for affordable housing, but we also took some of that money to provide for daycare facilities for the working poor, uh, and also to support the Women's Research Center in its effort to prevent women and children from becoming homeless. Uh, we need to look at things like switching to biodiesel and other economic fuels in our, in our uh, public uh, vehicles. Uh, we need to look at, uh, it's great to have more data coming into town, but we need to look at drawing other types of those businesses. If we can get a base of people who come to work downtown, and not just to work at Sublocki and then eat at Moe's and the other way around. Uh, I think that will help establish a better downtown and then get some housing built, perhaps uh, have some uh, owner-occupied takeover of some of the rental housing in the Progress Street area. Okay, thank you, Paul. Leslie, one minute closing statement. I appreciate the uh, uh, AARP having us here today. And uh, I guess I would just say in closing that most of us uh, moved here at a time when Blacksburg was a much tinier place, much less connected to the wider world, and it had a lot less uh, to offer. And uh, I loved it when I got here in 1982, and I, and I still love it, and I'll bet most of you share that sentiment. Uh, it's important not to get up, uh, caught up with the direness of all the things we need to do, and all the ways we're inadequate, and how everybody else is doing things better. Um, so as, as Mel Huber uh, would say, he's not here today, but we, ha we have a treasure of a town, so let's try not to mess it up. Let's go at it with that attitude. 
Um, That's a good ending statement. <laughs> uh, not mess things up. Yeah. Okay, will you join me in a round of applause for us? Thank you for your willingness to be public servants and serve. If you really like to hear these...